What's up guys? Welcome back to Jungle Back to another video. And in today's video, it is something I've been trying to do for so 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 long. You guys know with the Supra, we we're just pretty much holding off on that because I'm trying to do a collaboration on that. Trust me, the collaboration will be worth it when the time comes. We're just waiting on that. But while we're waiting on that, we have another big project that I've been kind of putting off because we've been trying to find the right thing, which is uh the 640i. I'm going to throw in a few clips from what I've done in the past couple of days. Um, I tried pulling out the spark plugs, the ignition coils, turning the engine by hand, replacing the oil. I've done a bunch of things so don't think I haven't done anything I've been doing a couple things on this car in the meantime and unfortunately you guys are about to see what happens Um, unfortunately now I think the, the motor is 100% seized. I sent it to a couple mechanics and they're like, yes. I mean, it was pretty much at the brick of being seized and now it's 100% seized. There's no point on trying to salvage this motor. Now you possibly can get it rebuilt, but honestly guys, for a car with only 78,000 miles, I figured if I can get another engine with similar mileage, um, I'd rather just do that because that's probably gonna be more healthy than ever. So we ended up picking up a motor for $3,500. This is supposed to be a $4,200 motor, but ended up picking up some uh, like a lot of parts. For, I mean, I ended up leaving spending $4,200. Um, but pretty much threw in two free X5M seats and a few other modifications for the X5, um, which pretty much valued about $600, $700, um, just because we got so many other things um, for the other builds as well when we we're over there. So that being said, we got the engine technically for $3,500, which I'm very happy about. It is a stripped down motor. It is just chilling right over here. This is an N55 all wheel drive motor, which means the only difference is, is the oil pan. Once you actually take off the oil pan, put on the oil pan from this motor, um, we'll pretty much have a complete engine with this one only having 75,000 miles and this one has 78,000 miles or even a proper paperwork and everything because I want to do this as legit as possible. This car with the low mileage that it has, the clean title, I want to keep everything documented and super clean because this car deserves it. So that being said, we did get a new motor, but before we actually get into the video, I do want to introduce a brand new tool we're going to be having on this channel, which is some quick jacks. I'm finally going to be unboxing this, putting this 640i on some quick jacks. These are just, like these are honestly a lifesaver, especially if you guys have low profile cars. Instead of jacking it from the side, the jacking it from the, uh, from the front and then putting two jacks jack stands or technically you would have to do that like twice because you have to put four jack stands if you're trying to get the car all the way up um which we're trying to do because we're trying to drop the transmission anyway i could talk all day about this but this is going to make life a whole lot easier so without further ado let's go ahead unbox these quick jacks and we have a bunch of other little goodies as well so that car you guys see right now in the background is my boy Erlon. He's going to be helping us out with the project. <laughs> he just dipped out. But anyways, back to the sponsor of today's video, which is Quick Jacks. I was so, so, so relieved. I was actually going to purchase these guys, especially now Memorial Day weekend. They have a sale for $200 off, I think, pretty much every single Quick Jack, and they include some kind of like new kit as well with the Quick Jacks. Honestly, guys, Quick Jacks is something I was going to buy regardless. I swear. I was literally going to buy it, but I was like, you know what? Let me reach out to them, and maybe we can work something out. And thankfully, we did work something out. But it was also super nice of them to they actually sent me a full LED bar, so we can actually put this in the bottom of the car and, uh, you know, actually have proper lighting underneath the car. So, I mean, if today's video um, looks better than ever, it's gonna be super sick. It's all because of this, it's all because of Quick Jacks, so shout out to them. So we also have these two little boxes, and this box over here, I'm pretty sure this is like the controls and everything for it, but these two, I'm not really too sure what they are, I guess we'll find out in a bit. Guys, talk about packaging. Yes, that is a piece of wood on top of it to make sure nothing gets dented or scratched. I've never seen people actually use wood for protection, but this looks really good. And I don't know if you guys know, but it's actually illegal to carry lots of wood nowadays because it's a rare commodity. They're worth thousands and thousands of dollars, and uh, having wood like this is actually very expensive, probably even more expensive than these quick jacks, um, which is crazy. I've literally heard people getting arrested for having so much wood in their cars. Guys, this looks so good and it's super low. I am so excited. Let's go ahead and just pop this bad boy out. All right, guys, so we finally have everything out of the box and everything laid out. I am so stoked to use all this. Like I said, guys, this light's gonna help when we're actually working on the transmission on the bottom of the car. These quick jacks are definitely gonna be very useful. We got like the medium size uh, jacks. We have the, the smaller size jacks. And I believe these are also a different sort. And then these are also some wall mounts for them, which is gonna be super nice. We have to put them off to the side. They also have wheels, so you don't have to carry these around. They are 75 
five pounds each. You can pull them up. They have wheels. You can roll them around and put them right against the wall, mount it up just like that. So that's going to be super nice. We're definitely going to be putting this up probably towards the end of the video. But for now, guys, we do have all the little attachments that we got to start putting on these quick jacks to get them to work. So let's go ahead and just get those on there. All right, guys, so we have the quick jacks pretty much ready to go. We connected everything needs to be connected to it. We also got this thing ready to go as well, but we do need to either automatic fluids or um, pretty much hydraulic fluids. So I need to go get some fluids real quick. So that'll be ready to roll. Once that's ready to roll, all this should be operational, which I'm super stoked about. But in the meantime, because I need to head out and get some fluids, my boy Alan is here, bro. Shout out to my G, um, always helping me uh, <laughs> and just watching all the major work. So he's gonna go ahead and start removing this whole front end so we can actually pull out the engine easier um, because also we don't also want to damage anything. We're not just pulling a motor from this. We do want everything to stay intact, right? Correct, so correct. yeah, yeah. And for the haters, Oh, for the haters, you guys saw early in the video. You guys are like, what is Erlan doing? He doesn't know what he's doing. End of the day, he knew exactly what he's doing because the engine ended up being seized. It was seized. It was pretty much on the brick of being seized, but everyone thought it was savable. Literally, all I did, bro, is remove the spark plugs, turn it over one time, seize. Which means, I mean, there is no way we could have saved it. That was the end of that. So yeah, end of the day, we got a motor, and uh, this motor is going to be honestly junk. Because if it was any other motor than M55, you could be like, oh, maybe it's not C's, but N55, we know the rod bearings fail. Yeah, yeah, no facts. Quick. And yeah. then plus, you saw that comment, right? The kid said on his Facebook post, he commented like, oh, it C's while I was doing burnouts or something like that, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the previous owner, right? Yeah, the previous owner. The previous owner, like, uh, somebody sent me a message from the, I don't know exactly what happened, but somebody sent me a, a message from the previous owner. He was doing donuts or something, then the engine up ended up locking up and seizing up um, and from oil starvation. So we pretty much already had a good idea. Yeah. And, you know, you just confirmed it at that same day, end up being seized i tried to see maybe there's a possibility just reading you guys' comments at the end of the day it was a seized motor so we got to just get this bad boy out So along was working on the engine bay, I finally got the fluids in here. As you guys can see, I'm a little bit sweaty because I was trying to figure out how you work on this kind of stuff. I'm not a professional, honestly. And in terms of, high, uh, what's it called? Um, like hydraulic fluids? High pressure hydraulic line. It, it just gets messy if you don't know what you're doing. So now that we, I think we have it figured out. We have it all set up right now. Um, we have literally this, this cool switch here. So once you have it all set up, it has some quick releases. So if you guys look over here, um, just to quickly disconnect it, we can just pull back on it and it just disconnects. We can put all this away. So that's what's super nice about this. You literally just move them out, move them in super easily. Then you just get it right back, connect it. And once it's all connected like that, we just click the up button and this is where the magic happens, guys. Oh, it's working. Also, just to also put it out there, guys, <laughs> our methods are not exactly perfect. Um, this is actually a longer wheelbase. I got one for a shorter wheelbase. Um, now, there are the extensions for this. So if you guys did go with a five, I think a 500 LT or a uh, or like 500 ST, it has like different names for it. It's on the website. Um, I didn't get the longer wheelbase version, mainly because most of the time I'm not really dealing with the six series. I'm dealing with like the four series or the three series or M3s and M4s. There's actually one locking point right here and there's another locking point right here so this actually gets it pretty like pretty high up um but this one will get the car like probably i'd say probably like four feet roughly i think it gets it up really high so let's go ahead and just do the first one so we're gonna keep pushing it up so this guy right there i think it's good right yeah and i would we'll check the other side so yeah guys we have it on the first setting and it looks so 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 good so we're able to now finally actually work underneath the car we could put it on the second setting but for now honestly i'm pretty happy with the first setting the height right as it is you guys are going to be seeing these quick jacks more and more on this channel if you guys want to get these for yourself there is a memorial's day discount 200 dollars off plus like some other kit as well for free so make sure to check them out down below but without further ado um we need to start tearing apart this front end so the garage can actually close we can continue this tomorrow if it doesn't work we're gonna have to get this thing back in the garage some more but Again, this is a pretty long nose, so if we can remove some stuff, that would be ideal.
this is day two. We are back. Alon is back at it again, removing things off the front end. I've been honestly working on the back scenes and trying to get some other things sorted while uh, erlon has been honestly working on the front end. I'll help him once it actually gets to the motor, but he's finally actually started removing a bunch of things off the front end. We have to try to get the whole front end off, mainly because we don't want to damage anything when it comes to this car. We want to remove everything and just reassemble everything once the engine is swapped over. I was actually supposed to upload today, which is Tuesday for you guys, but unfortunately, as you guys know, we ended up getting the wrong motor. There's four different versions of the N55, and we have the wrong motor, and I actually gave them the VIN number, and they still gave us the wrong motor. I'm actually gonna throw in a clip of what happened when we went to go try to get the motor. So yeah, it literally almost fell. This engine was pretty much bad luck from the start. So that being said, um, once we pull this motor out, we do need to head back and get that motor returned and get another motor. They do have another motor, but it's inside of a car. So it's gonna take me a day or two to remove. So it should be out possibly by tomorrow. So I'll go ahead and try to get that engine by tomorrow. And then hopefully this engine should be out. So we're literally just gonna be taking everything off of this, put it onto our new motor, put the new motor back in the car. Sounds way easier than it actually is. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and start removing as much things off the front end to make this job 10 times easier. And just like that, guys, the quick jacks are on the second level. Look at how much room we have down here. I mean, this is basically a mini lift, bro. This shit's crazy. <sighs> This is amazing. So this is gonna allow us to have a lot of clearance to be able to drop the transmission. Actually, if we honestly just wanted to do a transmission job alone, we'll be actually able to drop it down and get it out on our chest or on something. Or <laughs> These honestly are pretty sick. We power wash this area right here, so we're not gonna be working on the front end right now until this actually dries off. So until this dries off, we're on the bottom of the car. We're gonna try to move the exhaust, remove all the transmission bracket supports. So this engine is pretty much uh, just sitting on the engine mounts, and it'll make it a lot, lot easier to pull this thing out once we actually get this front clip out. So again, it's more of like, one of those things is a tedious process and you just have to start knocking things out. So let's get underneath the car and just start moving that exhaust in that transmission. Throughout this entire video, you guys have seen me work so, so, so hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some myself some Masada fries and eat in front of our line. Imagine. <laughs> no, we're both gonna take a food break right now. <laughs> we'll show you guys what we're getting. We've been eating this the last two days. It's probably not the healthiest thing in the world, but it's so good. We finally got the engine hoist up. The quick checks are on the second level. Um, we're not actually gonna be pretty much taking the engine out when it's on the second level. Probably gonna drop it down one level um, just because we don't wanna pull the engine up too high. I think it's gonna be absolutely crazy. If we bring the car down a little bit lower, it should be easier to pull out the engine and put less strain, honestly. Um, and probably, honestly, easier for us as well. I'm not really too sure. This might be a little too high. I mean, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. But anyways, we also picked up this bad boy from Harbor Freight. This is a Harbor Freight um, engine hoist. I think it's, it's called an engine hoist, right, bro? Uh, yeah. Because some people call it cherry picker some people call it engine hoist but it's the same thing right yeah same thing so this guy right here we ended up picking up um from harbor freight as well this actually allows us to be able to like hook it up from the back of the motor and the front of the motor so where we can actually like, pull it up like this or like this any way we want instead of the just instead of one chain we're pretty much just pulls on it and the whole train is sagging like that so this allows it to kind of have equal weight distribution in the back and the front this is pretty cool i think it was like 60 bucks this guy's like 200 bucks so well worth honestly the money especially if you're doing this more than once you guys know we're pulling the motor from this car you guys know we're pulling the motor from the E91. Actually, we already pulled the motor. We have to put a motor into the E91. Not to mention, when we get the donor car to pull a motor from that, and we also have the X5 project. So yeah, this was definitely worth the $250. But anyways, guys, at this point, let's just get everything hooked up and stop pulling her out. I cannot wait to see this motor out of the car. Guys, when we're pulling engines and stuff, you literally have to be super patient because there's a lot of little things you have to pay attention to. And uh, we're just kind of finessing it out. It's always like you have to finesse it out. 
But uh, we'll let y'all know once it's out. All right, guys. So we finally got this big old dude. This thing, this transmission is ginormous, bro. That is huge. So we finally have uh, the transmission and the engine out of the car. We're gonna be pulling it out. We're gonna be setting down right over here. And uh, obviously, we're not honestly gonna take anything off of this. By the way, bro, this thing looks super clean. That's crazy. This thing looks honestly like zero oil leaks. It sucks it out of blowout. Like it's not even like a rod bearing went through the block or anything or anything cracked. It just it just literally died, which you know kind of sucks. But uh, all right, be careful, brother. All right, you know what, guys, I'm gonna sit down the camera and help out our lawn. I don't I don't want anything uh, you know funky going on with the main guts, the main heart of the beast. Now that we have the engine out, we're pulling out the stock turbo that we ended up buying on top of this. So the car came with pure stage two turbos, um, but I actually wanted to buy the stock turbo just because if this one blew with such low mileage with pure stage two turbos, I don't really want to put another pure stage two turbo on a similar mileage engine. That being said, um, he also told me that he, it, this was only on the car for like less than, I think 10,000 miles. So um, that wasn't on there for long. That is the stock turbo we have right there. Um, this is the upgrade pure stage two turbo. If you guys look in there real quick, that is a pure stage Stage two. I don't know if you guys can see the, uh, the is it called a turbine or one? Like a turbine. That that's the size of a pure stage two. Let me show you guys a stock one real quick. Uh, much much smaller. Actually, the whole like circle area is actually like, is that even the same cast? Because like, how do you fit a bigger turbine? They they, uh, they bore it out, it out, machine yeah. it out. Oh, that's crazy. Cause yeah, that is a lot bigger. And guys, this is the downpipe that was on the car. Um, again, this thing has full bolt-on. It had an aftermarket intercooler right over here. Um, e, no, G Plus. Uh, I don't really know how I feel about that. I never heard of the brand. I might actually put that back to stock too. If any of you guys want a 640i, uh, I think this is pretty much considered a big intercooler. Hey, I'll trade you for a stock one at this point. I'm gonna reach out to the previous owner. If he wants this, I'll probably get a stock one. Um, in terms of the downpipe, I did went ahead and get the uh, original cap for this car because uh, I honestly don't, I never seen this. Does it even have a brand on it? I don't even know what this is there's no brand on it it doesn't look that great either so <laughs> we, we might we might just throw i mean we're definitely gonna be putting on the original cat as well um even the charge pipe i think the charge pipe was a good charge pipe remember what charge pipe brand that was it says another couple it's okay so er again i haven't heard of that brand either. you guys know me i either go with like vrsf burger tooting that kind of stuff so uh anywho just because i don't know the brand of any of these things i'm not going to put it back in the car just in case those are going to cause some issues to the motor or just the way it performs or anything like that so we are going to be much going full back to stock and Enjoy the car. Probably put a couple hundred miles on it. Take it out for a road trip. Show you guys a little bit with the car. And uh, just make sure everything is solid. Again, our goal is to just hear this thing turn over, bro. I'm talking about all this stuff, bro. But if we hear this thing turn over, yeah, this is one of those cars that we buy and it had no power. We never drove it. We literally towed it straight to our house. It's been in our garage. Never saw one mile um, <laughs> with my foot. So I really want to enjoy this car. Hopefully, hopefully, I get everything sorted. I did just call Specialized German, and they're going to be hooking us up. They're going to be saying, they're going to be taking back that motor and get us another motor. They're very kind people. So shout out to them for working with me here. And now that we're at the end of the video, guys, I do want to say thank you all so much for watching. Um, pretty much the 640i is now ready to go. I mean, pretty much the engine's out of the car, the transmission's out of the car. We're just waiting on that new engine. I cannot wait to hear that car turn over. Guys, it has massaging seats, heated seats, cooling seats, a bunch of options, the big touch screen on there. I'm pretty sure pretty much it pretty much has like Apple CarPlay. It looks like it. I'm not really 100% sure because I didn't want really to play out it too much, but the car is so, so, so nice and I definitely want to take it out for a little bit of a joyride. It'll be so nice if we can get a car that's at $12,000 running for under 15, that's worth 22 to 23 to help us achieve the goal would be absolutely amazing. I'm hoping the only issue with the car is obviously the engine that's one of the major issues so if we pick up another engine we should be good hypothetically that's assuming none of the wires or anything got damaged throughout this whole process but i'm hoping i'm hoping after an engine we are gravy in the navy for those of you guys who are wondering what's going on with the x5 i'm just pretty much copying so much parts i'm copying like maybe like a couple thousand dollars worth of parts so we can actually make one video of turning that thing into like an insane x5 all in one video for you guys and hopefully that should be coming up pretty soon as well and don't forget if you guys want to cop some some quick jacks check out those links down below but without further ado i love y'all so much remember to stay on bossy on the next one peace out